what do you think men don't understand about what women want? Uh, well, they definitely want somebody to, I mean, it's very basic for me, at least. They want uh, attention when it comes to like listening and caring. Those are the main easy ones, to be honest. You don't have to have the, you know, the giant muscles and be six foot. Uh, that's, that's a plus, I would say. But the person, it's more like me, I love communication. And I, I actually like care about the individual I'm with. So maybe that's why it's so easy for me because, you know, they, they feel that I really am with them in the moment, not just, you know, somewhere else. You're not just a... Yeah, not a, it's not just... You're not just a stud who's there for sex. You're, you're more much. of a companion. Well, that was, that's, usually that's their first thing is, is sex maybe, but then once um, they get very comfortable, like the first day, obviously, they want actually more just to hang out and be with somebody, you know, uh, be more intimate, uh, tell stuff that they probably wouldn't tell to their, you know, family members or husbands. Husbands, exactly. The 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 interaction that you'll have with your female mm -hmm. clients, how long do they last? Because like very often with the male customers of female yes. sex workers, their the interactions are sometimes fifteen minutes. Oh no no no! I have pretty much like. Like, for example, I have clients that I'm with. You told, one me, you, you told me you just got out through with a, a week, right? Yes, one week. So um, usually I don't really do uh, one hour, two hour, because I have so much options maybe. But um, minimum at least three hours to overnight, which is very often. Mm -hmm. Overnights and obviously more, a couple of days. And, and your clients are married or single or? Uh, well, usually they are married or single business women, so they don't have time to be in a relationship pretty much. Mm -hmm. And or maybe they try being in a relationship, but the relationship is not as the quality of it is not as they expect to be. So. Yeah, so that's why I'm there. <laughs> you're from Europe. You're Correct. From, you're from Poland? Poland. What was your childhood like growing up in Poland? So uh, so my parents uh, got divorced when I was two years old, I think. So obviously I was not uh, in plant. <laughs> and um, my mom came to the United States when, when I was two. So I didn't see my mom for until I was 11 years old. I didn't even know how, to, back then they didn't have internet, obviously. And my father was just traveling around the Europe, you know, just working or doing whatever he wanted to do. So who raised me was pretty much my aunt and my grandma, which, you know, they were not like in my life. So I could do whatever I want when I was three, four, five, six, seven years old, I had friends that were 18, 19 years old. So I didn't have like a curfew. I mean, I had, but I didn't care. Um, you know, I was just living, learning from individuals that pretty much were kids. So that's not a good influence. And this, this was where? In Poland. In Poland. And then I moved to New York City when I was 11. Meanwhile, my 11 years old was thinking already like I'm 20 something years old, which is very obviously unhealthy, <laughs> and especially in New York. So I had friends that were, most of my friends were, uh, I would say, individuals that were very not um, good to the human society. They were obviously um, bad individuals. Um, they didn't know, but they were not the best ones. And yeah, and from there, I just, you know, that was my family more. The friends were my family. So from there, uh, I was doing bad stuff when it comes to, I was a drug dealer. Uh, I was a hooligan, which is somebody that's, you know, just like a gang member or something. From there, I was, so I was many characters in my life. From there, I was 
then I, I got tired of drug dealing, so I was doing uh, stock market, which I was pretty good at it. And f but the thing is, what I because being like a I guess a hooligan or a drug dealer, or somebody that's n doesn't obey the law, it's like a drug too, because you have the power, you have people that are, are you know are intimidated by you, especially in my community, uh, in New York, the Polish community, I was very known. I'm I'm still yeah, but I'm but I don't want to be around that community. So probably pretty much, I don't know what's happening now. But so I was very known in that community, and my the group of people I was surrounded myself were very known in New York and New Jersey and Chicago. So, but I didn't like that lifestyle because I didn't like me as a human being. I was a horrible human being, uh, and so yeah. So I started the trading stock market, I was really successful, but a friend, I uh, guess, a friend of a friend wanted to do some business. So I went into a uh, uh, cigarette smuggling business. Uh, so from that, it was also very lucrative. We would say, I don't know, I was making 60,000 a week. It was insane money, but obviously it's also illegal. And then I got taking advantage of that individual, and from that, I was facing prison time, which was three and a half years. And from that, pretty much, uh, I got to be uh, an entrepreneur slash companionship slash just enjoying my life fully in all ways as possible. And yeah. So your young, your younger childhood, you didn't have your mom and dad. No. Your aunts and... My aunts and, and my grandma. But see, in Poland, it's a little bit different. Like, I could do whatever I want. Because especially the, the place I was in Poland is not really a big city place. or It's like a town, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I could do whatever I want. I didn't have to, you know, listen to anybody. Especially when you are maybe like a little child boy. You, you're listening more to your friends because you want to be liked by them and they want to be liked by you. So, yeah. Do, do you think that... You're like a rebel. Yeah. Do you think that childhood somehow may have led you into what you're doing now? Um, probably, yes. I would say so. Because um, I never liked to... I mean, I went to college. I graduated. I went to high school, all that. I never liked a regular job. Uh, I always wanted to be independent. Since I was a kid, obviously I had to be independent. So let's say, you know, buying stuff for me or taking care of myself. So that's actually like an aspect you, in a way, like you being your own boss, let's say. So yeah, definitely, I would say so. So it's, it has to be, like you say, it's not for everyone because you have to have the, the mindset, the grid, the, you know, Everything has to come up since you were a child, or say. And then you can do pretty much when you're older. You, you understand the world differently. It's like a curtain is open, and then you see what is it about. And are you saving money? Are you, you, are you living comfortably? I would say so, yes, very comfortably. How did you get into this line of work? Uh, well, I love sex. <laughs> That's one. It doesn't make you unique. Doesn't make me unique at all. But um, I guess I like to please. Maybe that's why. And I enjoy it. It's not just the money. It's more I like to enjoy doing it. So maybe that's why I'm a go so good at it. Do you love women? <laughs> oh, I love women. Definitely. I think that's a big plus. Yes. Because some men, I think deep down, don't like women. Probably. Or they, they, they value them very low. Mm -hmm. you know? I value them way higher than men. Maybe that's why. <laughs> uh, but yes, I love women. And you've, you've been in rom romantic relationships that are Oh, mean, yeah, I was, I was married you? before. You were married. I was married before, uh, five years married. Uh, we were together 10 years. Uh, we separate, well, 
we separated. Maybe I didn't want to be with her anymore because we had a different goals and lifestyles. So that's why probably we separated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But other than that, um, since I was a kid, I pretty much didn't have a lot of relationship. Mostly was uh, friends with benefits, as you can call, since I was a little. So maybe that's why I'm so used to and comfortable and maybe have the, I don't know, uh, personality to, to fit that description. How, how many female clients do you have or will you have at a time? You, you, have, you have regulars that will call you back? Oh, yes. I have um, some that are very, I would say, even more than just a client. It's more like a friendship. So, you know, we just say hi, how was your day, and all that. It's not like, um, it's more than just time and money. But usually, yes, I have a lot. <laughs> I don't know, their count is, I don't even know, but it's a lot, I'm sure. And, and when, you, when you get together with a client, is there always sex involved or is it sometimes not sex? Uh, pretty much, there's, most of the time it's sex involved. But uh, sometimes, in the beginning, like let's say if I meet with a client, they just want a lot of sex, and it's for hours. <laughs> but uh, one, the, obviously the next day, or they, they actually want uh, like a companion, just hang out, go on a date, uh, do something interesting, go on a show. So it's more like a boyfriend experience, and obviously sex included, but it's less than sex then. And you're, you're a very handsome young man. Are the women sometimes not as attractive as you uh, would, would like to, them to be? For me or, for or personally? For, for me, uh, well, the, here's the thing. For me, it's uh, because I had so many women in my life. So it's not about the looks. Uh, it's more about the personality. The pers that's what I love, especially intelligent women. That's what I love about it. That's great. Yes, and um, and pretty much when it comes to my, um, well, my, I guess, when it comes to my looks, I like, you know, bodacious women. That's my, uh, I yeah, guess, type. Thing, right? That's my type. Exactly. I had all of them, but that's my type, so. Every guy's got a type. Exactly. <laughs> I think every, I think guys have a physical type that they're attracted to, and women w operate very differently. Exactly. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Where, where a woman can be attracted to any type of guy, big, strong, weak, thin, smart. Yes. You know, as, as soon as they get emotionally attached, then they become physically attracted. Yes. And, well, here's the thing with me. Uh, I think I have issues is women get very emotionally attached to me, even though like, if it's a client. So it's very thin line when I have to, like, you know, uh, explain, I guess what the arrangement is, but they get very um, attached all the time, which that's the issues that I'm having problem with. But obviously it's not a bad problem. <laughs> but it is a problem. Because it is a problem because then it's, you know, I don't, obviously I don't want to, I guess, break nobody's heart or, you know, I, I'm here to... Uh, but if you're doing a good job, the, the, the woman gets att attached. Yes, att attached, yes. Well, you live, you, you learn. <laughs> And you make good money doing this? Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the guys are going to be like, how do I get this job? Uh, well, I don't think it's for, it's, I think it's, when you look at it for the money perspective, then it's harder. Um, I was already, I guess, f well financially before I was doing it. So how is what you do different than what a, like a prostitute does with her client. Sometimes those, those interactions are very short. Yes. They have their sex. It's very clearly, you know, prostitution is illegal here in the United mm -hmm. States. So those, those interactions are probably very illegal. Probably, yes. By, in the eyes of the law. Exactly. The, the, the morals of it all is a very different conversation. But what is, how is what you do different than what the, the women are doing with men? Well, uh, it, what I do is individuals try to gain contact with me either through email, through social media, a lot. 
um, text, obviously if I have a number or or if I promote myself, but that usually I don't really, I guess, call or ask anyone. There's so much <laughs> demand, I guess, maybe for me or in general, that individuals have to contact me and then I have to fill them out, filter them out if if it's a right fit, if if I, if it's worth it, if uh, if pretty much you screen them. Yes, I have to screen them, and women do have to do that too. But they do it for the safety. I do it for if it's the right fit for me. If I have the time. If how, it's how will more, you screen them? Will you see a photo? Will you? Uh, or just well, talk I to ask them, them questions. Uh, pretty much what they're into. If if the, it's let's say if it's about money, if it's in their budget. And and obviously sometimes individuals say no, and I'm I'm happily not negotiable. I just say okay, that's fine with me. Not a good fit. Not a good fit. I'm sure we can find somebody else, and they are actually very shocked because they think I can. They could probably negotiate with me, which will not work. <laughs> but it's funny how it is. And yes, and from there, there if if there's more text, then I send them photos. They send me some photos, and from there. If I like it, then we can meet. And then it, here's the thing. If I like the uh, first encounter, then I can meet. But usually if I don't like it, even if it was okay, I say next time no. So it's very, for me, it's very different because I say no a lot, constantly. Like even now, I'm, let's say I'm going to meet somebody after this interview. And I had already three, and I had to say no to two, and maybe one. We'll see. It's very interesting how how the male female dynamic is so yes, it's, it's so different. You know, yes. with women, you know, I see I see what happens on Figueroa Street, which is a big uh, prostitution pro- prostitution track on uh, okay in Los Angeles, and uh, the guys roll up, mm-hmm. they see a girl they like, they they negotiate, the girl gets in the car, and they go. Yeah, exactly. That's it. It's very they, dangerous they, too. They go, yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. yeah, and the guys decide they like what the girl has yeah. to offer, and they run Can off work. and do their do their transaction. <laughs> with you, it's you know, and with, with you know, men selling sex is a, is ridiculous. It is because every guy wants sex, and every girl is basically holding out to yeah, pretty get, much get what you that's, want. That's their, uh, I guess, that's their hook mm-hmm. when it comes to men. Yeah, because when men want, you can look at it that way. Sure, exactly. And women, they play hard to get. Let's say. That's their, I think, tactic. So, so what, what, are, what are you offering that makes a woman say, hey, I want this? Uh, well, I think I know how to persuade individuals very... W- I know how to ask the questions that they want to answer. And from there... I'm being honest with them. Maybe that's... I don't like to sugarcoat or... Promise them, I don't know what. And You're not sweet talking them. No, no, no. You have to be very uh, honest and respectful too. And once they realize that you are honest and respectful, they be they tr- they trust you because obviously I'm sure there's I'm, I'm not the only one in New York especially. So there's a little bit. I would say, like I say, people need to if they care more, like I care. So I will give them my time and while we talk. And they it's very rare when people give them time because that all they need is money. Usually, let's say on my side, is they thinking about money, not the experience. I'm thinking about the experience first and then I think about the money. So that's my, I charge maybe a little bit more because I deserve it in a way. Then that's why. <laughs> what were you doing before? Uh, trading stock market, and I had businesses, uh, retail businesses. And how did this? How did you make the transition into this? Um, I guess, like I said, I loved sex, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and oh, and I was uh, well, the main thing, well, th- that's the main thing. I was about to get incarcerated. So for me, I was thinking, okay, I need to get sex as much as possible. Because you're going to go to jail? Yes. So then... For what? Uh, 
well, there was many things, but it was mainly because um, my business partner stole a lot of money from me and I uh, beat him up really bad. And yeah, and all that came from from that. So pretty much that's why I I wanted to oh try something, you know, if I'm going to be away, I need to get as much sex as possible. So that worked, but I, it never works out. You always want more sex. But uh, <laughs> uh, and then from there, I'm like, oh, that, I'm really good at it and I, uh, I enjoy it. So why not? Yeah. And the women will range from different ages, young and old? Yes. Um, some of them my age, uh, most of them in the, in the 40s. Some of them older, like 50s. But yes, some, between 40s, I guess, I'm 34, so I'm not that young yet. I mean. <laughs> it's all relative. The, it's all relative. The yeah. women will be married. I mean, some of them, I'm sure, are married, and they know their husbands are doing something on the side, so they're doing the same? Oh, Definitely. Definitely. Or even maybe they're not even doing nothing on the side, but they just don't care about them. Um, pretty much, you know, when you, I don't know, people when they get, I guess, in a relationship, they get very comfortable and they don't put the work. So probably that's probably the reason why also. You know. what, what have you learned about romantic relationships that you can apply to your own life one day, maybe when you meet someone? Um, well, you need to care about the other person, bad or good. And you have to, even when you don't like something about the individual, either their personality or maybe their dislikes or like, you still have to care and accept them for who they are. And if you accept the person for who they are, then you actually will not care about the negative stuff, let's say. You will care about the positive stuff and you make it grow from there and, and have an amazing relationship. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you foresee doing this for many years, or is this temporary? Uh, well, no, it's been five years. So it's been some time. Um, unless I will feel like I have to do it, uh, like, because I, I need to do it, then probably I will not do it. But if I enjoy doing it, here's the thing about doing it, because it's not only just obviously the money or the experiences, it's also meeting interesting individuals. So you meet interesting individuals and you get friendship and you know, it's, it's like you grow in your network, let's say. So it's more than just, uh, you know, now, it's more in the future what, what could happen and what could be. And it's feasible that one day you'll have a client who you become yeah, attached it could to. Be, and could be very, could be. It could, you could, I could fall in love deeply and, yeah, and settle maybe. But here's the thing. I, I like to be non-monogamous. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure I would never, I mean, I tried it, obviously. I was married. But I'm sure I would never uh, be uh, in a monogamous relationship. So maybe I could be in a relationship, but it's going to be non-monogamous, which means... I would date other individuals, right? Open, and she could too, obviously. Yeah. An open marriage. Exactly. So an open relationship. Open relationship. Yeah. So I will still love the individual, but obviously I will date and let's say have sexual pleasures with other. Do you, th do you think humans are just not meant to be in a monogamous in a, relationship, you know, monogamous forever? Uh, I mean, it depends who, th I, I personally think. Serial monogamy, maybe. Civil monogamy, maybe back in the day it was working, but now, you know, people, like for example, me, I was in a relationship. I was, I was very, I was always faithful in my marriage, I would say. Even, even little things like, let's say I was hanging out with my friends and, you know, a beautiful woman passing by. I would never even talk to her or even turn around. I would be, I would be very, and I had many opportunities also, let's say, be unfaithful. But I never did that, and I tell you the truth, it would be, I'm sure the relationship would be much better and more uh, if, let's say, I would have uh, sexual pleasure with other women. So then maybe even though, let's say, you have sex with somebody, but then you, are, you miss, let's say, your love and you really and deeply want to have sex because it's way different when you're in love or making love than uh, it's a sex. Like night and day. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, so that would actually make the relationship even more probably stronger from that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
Do you get? Do you ever get caught by, by the husbands? No, not really. To tell you the truth, here's the thing about the husbands. I even have clients that husbands give them gifts as meat to their wives. Oh, really? Like they book the, the whole day. Or let's say there's a husband sitting in the room and watching me having sex with, with his wife. That's an amazing relationship, by the way. <laughs> but you see how it is? So it's, yeah. it depends on... Many different types. Many different types, yes. What does your typical date look like? You guys go out to dinner and you have uh, long conversations? or Well, it depends for how long. If it's for the whole day, then it's just like anything. It's you waking up, um, morning, you know, either I could make breakfast or we could both make breakfast. Um, kissing, touching, uh, sex, obviously, in the kitchen or anywhere, whatever they, whatever happens. And then from there, we probably gonna go on a date, like do something together. It could be uh, go work out, go jogging on the beach, uh, doing yoga together, going to a class. And then from there, dinner and probably hang out or maybe a show. Usually a lot of shows. And yeah, and passionate sex. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again. Uh, probably at least three or four times a day. Um, sometimes, well, that's if it's a, an overnight date, obviously. If it's for uh, three hours or two hours, it's mostly constantly sex. <laughs> a little bit talking, cuddling, but constantly sex. A lot of coming for me. <laughs> it's a physical job for you. It's very, uh, it's a workout, definitely. You have to be very fit, stamina, and you have to know how to control, uh, you know, the senses of, you know, and you have to practice. And when you practice, you, you'll be better at it. The longest interaction, the longest date you've had is uh -huh. the one. How, how, how long will you be get, get booked for? Uh... About a week or so, because that usually it's up to me too. So I don't really want longer because like with, with say with me, I have a lot of clients. I cannot just drop everything and, and you know, be with one person because then, you know, pretty much I will not spend with the other people. And it's like you have to manage the time of basically nurture all the relationships so it will be, you know, equally does, does it get difficult to, like, so you're on a date with a one uh -huh. woman for three days, say? Yes. And then the other ones are calling you and they want to talk and they want to exactly. have just a little phone interaction. Exactly. So I usually, um, I usually text and sometimes call, but I always have, like, a communication. If I don't reply, that means I'm, I'm probably with somebody. Or do, and they all, and they know, and they're all they perfectly understand. understandable. They don't, and obviously, the individuals that I'm with, they're very busy individuals, mm. like uh, extremely busy. So they, they understand uh, how to respect somebody's time. Do you ever get burnt out? Uh, I need, like, at least, let's say, a day off. Uh, I'm obviously very fit and I um, put amazing fuel in my body. So, and maybe gen genetic, I'm very good at a lot of stuff. So maybe, not really. Maybe I'm more burned off maybe uh, because I'm an introvert too, which is very weird. I like space for myself, let's say in my house and just, you know, just relax. So I have to manage everything. And yeah. And how much money do you, I mean, because you're not, you're not going, you're not whining and dining these women because the money is coming, it's flowing in your direction, not theirs. Exactly, correct. So you're, you're take you're, you're taking them out, but they're, they're paying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do pay too, because I like to, I like to pay as well. It's not just me, 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 because mm -hmm. I like to give too. But in the end of the get together, they're writing you a check or they're, they're sending you a yes. A large payment? Yes. Mm -hmm. How much is that payment typically? Well, it depends for the days. Usually my overnight is not really that much. It's 1250 I think it's people um, pay more. 
um, for let's say a week is mostly eight thousand dollars. So it's not bad, but it's. <laughs> What, what advice can you give to men who are in relationships or are dating mm -hmm. that they just don't seem to understand what their girl wants, uh, what their partner wants? I think everybody's selfish. They're selfish with their time, and they're, they're not aware enough of, let's say, if you have somebody that really loves you and cares about you and are willing to spend time with you, you're supposed to also spend time with them and be more aware instead of, you know, being on social media maybe or watching a TV. Let's say a lot of, I noticed from my previous relationship, let's say you're in a room, but you're watching TV together and you're not really communicating, you're just watching something together. So it's not really, you know, you're not really together, even though you are in the same sp space. So be more, you know, try to learn about the other individual. And... And care. Pretty much, don't be selfish. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, that's a common problem. Yes, everybody's just me, 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 me. Maybe I have it easier because I know I'm getting some value of it, obviously, when it comes to money. And I guess I'm looking on the big picture uh, because I'm also very picky with who I meet. It's not just I pick anyone and I, at first, obviously, we have a chat, what, the, what they like, if I'm, I can even provide that, and if I want to, and, and then we go from there. So I'm looking, oh, if I want to surround myself, women that are very um, same-minded individuals, open-minded individuals, you know, intelligent, and, and then I go from there. Do you get women complaining about their, their partners, their husbands, uh, what they're not providing? Yes, a lot. So that's, that's me coming in when I'm like the therapist in a way. And obviously, I'm not the kind of person that obviously give the advice to anyone if I wouldn't be in their shoes. If I, I was thinking if I would be in the shoes, what would I do? And I, would, I, would like, I wouldn't say I would cross that individual out, just, you know, Communicate, pretty much, and go from there. You must have some interesting stories of how these interactions have gone, these yes. dates have gone. Yes. Um, T tell me a story or two of. of okay, um, I have a story. Let's say a woman once, which is very uh, interesting. A lot of women, I I was surprised that they want somebody. Let's say when you let's say you meet in a hotel. Okay, I come in and they don't want now. Uh, and communication, just basically they want me just to rip her clothes off and basically feel like she's being used, which is obviously turns individuals, like let's say, I'm not trying to be uh, dominant or anything, but it turns everybody out because it's like more uh, sensitive. So they like rough sex, a lot of rough sex. Like basically like you almost are taking advantage of them. And, and that's what they're into. I don't know why. Maybe that was, that's their like fantasies like, obviously, every almost, day. Almost like being raped? Maybe not like being raped, but very close to that kind of, uh, you know, experience. Mm -hmm. They like rough, um, uh, smacking, a lot of stuff Ch like that. Choking. Choking. And, but they also obviously at the end, they, they want more cuddling and more love but that's the first the, their their first uh fantasy that they would like to have just rough not even have say hi or bye you just go and basically like taking advantage of them so that's one of their experience uh -huh. some other experiences like um they would like to have sex in the public somewhere so it could be let's say we are the restaurant and under the table, you know, we are massaging each other and then we go to the bathroom and just have wild sex. So they have um, that kind of fantasies as well, which is in the public in a way. Um, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got their little kink. Everybody has their little kink, yes. Which is fine, you know. That's what they want. That's their desires that they want to make it come true. So they, that's why they call me.
<laughs> or emotionally, what does this kind of work do for a young man like yourself? Emotionally, uh, it makes me f um, learn about human behavior, how it works, which is I'm always like to learn stuff, especially about humans. So it makes me realize how, you know, individuals, I guess, think in their mind and obviously how they, I guess, try to live in this world of ours. And you can see their lives, you know, their private lives and then their secret lives and then their uh, public life. <laughs> So it's very interesting. Or, or, you know, when I ask women about what they've, wh wh female sex workers, what they've learned about men, they often say that men are very simple. Oh, really? Yeah. That men, yes. men are just very basic and simple. They're very, very easy, basic. Very easy to figure out. Yes. What uh, would you say you've learned about women? It depends. Like, for example, if I, it was, I would just be starting out, then obviously you have to understand what is their first desires and how do they think. But so in the beginning, they feel like complex too. But then like, for example, me, I already is very, it's also very basic. Because <laughs> everybody pretty much want the same thing at the end, which is pleasure and connection and feel some kind of um, chemistry that you really care about them. And that's all. And if they get that, a tipsy of the, of, of, the, of the high of that, then they can live their lives and be, you know, normal. And then obviously after time, like everything, every, like everything is a, in a way is like a drug. So once you get it, then you want more or, you know, you want better, pretty much. <laughs> How, what, what percentage of the women that you're, are your clients are married? I would say, Maybe 70%. Yes. We're all unfaithful, aren't we? Pretty much. <laughs> In one way, yes. What does that make you think about the, just the, the, the nature of relationships between men and women? Are they all doomed to uh, fall apart eventually? Uh, well, it depends. Or, 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 or lead to some open relationship. That's the thing. It probably will lead to some open relationship, especially if it's a, you know older relationship. If uh, they just communicate what they want and their desires and accept both of their, uh, I guess, goals, then they will have an amazing relationship. But the thing is, if they're secretive, that's probably the, what ruins the relationship is the, the, the secret, the cheating. secret. And then maybe the secret comes out or maybe from that secret, let's say they're being secret about, let's say being unfaithful, but then that's like a habit. They get, they, they're not sharing other stuff. And then that ruins the relationship. It's just miscommunication. That's all it is. I think if they would communicate better, then they will have a better relationship in their lives and outside of their relationship. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. Yeah. All right, Tom, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and experiences. Thank v you. Very interesting. Of course. I wish you lots of luck with your, with your career. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right.